So, Michael, can you tell me why you decided to send a video message to Tobin? Well, basically for him to, to see if he can come clean and be a man and let the police know exactly what has happened to other people out there if he has done anything to anybody else. Why do you, why do you think a video might work when the letter to him was ignored? Well, as, as I've said in the letter, um, can you not read or write? This is why we're sending the CD, so that he can watch and listen, and he doesn't have to read. Do you think that he might see this and change his mind? Well, if he's a man at all, yes. I think um, I think he should be he should be able to read this, uh, well, to see the video, yeah. and watch it, and hopefully Sam might come out of it. I mean, he might he might come clean. I mean. At the end of the day, it hasn't got long to go as far as I'm led to believe, so why take it to his grave with him? There's other people out there suffering that have lost children and relatives, aunties, uncles, whatever. I mean, it should come clean and let the police know. What sort of things have you put in your video message to him that you hope will make him change his mind? What, what tactics have you... Used or well, no, no, nothing seems to get his back up. So, I mean, I've used the, the word paedophile, which obviously he is, because my daughter was fifteen. That makes him a paedophile, and I hope you, I hope you're reading this or hearing this, Peter, because that's exactly what you are. You are a paedophile, and I can't, I can't forgive you for what you've done to my daughter, and I don't think I ever will, to the day you die and after you die. But do you think calling him that will make him angry and do you think that will help? Well, I, I wish I could just get, get into his cell because I could make him angry, OK? I could make him really angry if I could speak to that man. The things I could say to him that it's not, it's not available for print. So, at the end of the day, Peter, you want to send me a visitation, I'll come and see you. And we could have some heated words, believe me, over the table. Have you taken any advice from, from anyone involved in the case on what sorts of things to say to him? Yes, I am. The Operation Anagram in Glasgow, uh, we went through there to see how it was going, and it's quite a, an operation. And if, if, if you're listening to this, Peter, believe me, they didn't need anything that's in that office for you, from you, because they have dug some shit up about you and honestly, we have been told by the police that we can write you as many letters as possible. And I'm a, I'm a great believer that if somebody writes you a letter, people say, I just tear it up. That's not true. You want to see what's in that letter, Peter. At all times, you will always want to see what's in that letter. What are you... What do you think Peter Tobin would say to you if he did actually change his mind and come back to you? Or what are you hoping he would say to you? Well, for, well I, I honestly think, that for what it's worth, I think he would just turn around and say, like he said to the CID officers that went up to interview him in Peter Head, I don't know the girl. I've never met her. Does that sound like you, Peter? Because my wife says I sound like you. I don't know the girl. I've never met her. What a liar you are. Believe me, you are one liar. You have met all three of them and you're not man enough to stand up and say that you have. <laughs> were, you, were you hoping that his conviction over Vicky's death would give you some peace? And do you now find yourself still you know, wanting to, to know more? Well, when the, when the court case was over in Dundee, the Solicitor General, um, Frank Mulholland, he actually got us in and, well, basically I wanted to meet Frank after the court case and after it was finished, for it to come in and say, thank you very much, brilliant. But it's Frank Mulholland turned around and said to me, he says, Michael, this is almost started. This will never finish. Supposing you live to year 100, he says, this will always creep up because this gentleman is a serial killer.
Imagine me calling him a gentleman. No danger. He has a serial killer, he says, and it'll always crop up to the day you die. He says, you'll never get away from it. He says, supposing you turn around and say you don't want any more to do with it. He says, the, the, the media will always be chatting your door. Always. Mm -hmm. But you still, but you still want to know, obviously, why he did it, and precisely what happened. Well, as I've said in the letter, I've a funny, I've a funny, I've a good idea how he got my daughter in the car. She would never have went in that car. She got in that car simply because there was a kid in the back of it. Once she got in, he gave her all the bullshit about. I'll need to take the kid round the road because it'll be time for its bed. Um, you want to come into the house, take the kid in. My wife will be there, so they went in, oh, she's at the bingo, I thought she'd have been in. You want a cup of tea? Drugged her. End of story. Yeah. And I can tell you now, if this is being recorded, Pierre, for you to listen to in the jail and for the speak, I can assure you, see if you hadn't uh, drugged that girl, she would have kicked some shit out of you because she was one big, strong lassie. She would have kicked the living daylights at you. Only because you were drugged, the reason she didn't kick the shit out of you. Mm -hmm. You talked earlier about if you were able to get into a cell with Tobin that you'd have some strong words with him. Do you think you'd be able to leave it at words? Would you be able to restrain yourself? Well, I, I wouldn't like to restrain myself. Uh, somebody would need to do it, but that, that, I mean, that's out of the question. That, that, we know that's not going to happen in the jail because they're not going to allow that. I mean, if I was to get to speak to Tobin, it would be behind a screen, I believe. I, I don't know what they've got in the jails. Cause I've never been in one. But I don't think I would ever get to touch him. I'd love to get to touch him, but that's never going to happen. Never. What about the rest of your family? How are they coping with it? Sharon is your the daughter, I think. Yeah, well, she, she doesn't want to take anything to do with it now. She's actually taking her back seat. Um, but, I, I mean, my kids to this day, I, I think about Vicky all the time, you know. I mean, it's, it's an ongoing conversation, which is a good thing. But Sharon, I mean, she doesn't want nothing to do with it anymore. She's just taking her back seat. Because your um, first wife, Vicky's mum, passed away without. Yeah, sorry, I don't know. What happened? Uh, no. What are your feelings on that? Um, I, I, I'm quite sad about that and because, I mean, she wanted to know exactly what happened to Vicky and that day never came. It was a sad day, but it never came. Hopefully, they're roaming about up in heaven somewhere together. So.